and welcome to our webinar Calibration of Process Vessel Scales. My name is Matthias Rehren and I'm in charge of the global business with integrators for tank and hopper products and industrial scales. In this webinar I will give you some advice about different calibration methods of process vessel scales, their pros and cons, and I will give you a live demonstration of um, a calibration of a scale based on software. In this chapter um, we will look into the different alternatives of uh, calibration of process vessel scales and I will give you a live demo of um, the calibration of a process vessel scale by software. Accuracy of a process vessel scale can only be measured with weights. Um, that means a known, a known weight has to be compared with a display readout uh, and possible differences need to be corrected. The mass and the error of the calibration weight must be known. You know, this is a reference weight. And the procedure to compare the known weight with the display is called calibration. We also make um, a difference between uh, the correction of the difference in calibration and the calib and the just the readout, which is called adjustment, if we correct the difference. The calibration of tanks and silos with weights is very difficult, as you can imagine, uh, because high capacity weights need to be handled. Let's look into different alternatives of calibration with weights. One option is calibration with water. This can be done uh, by means of a high accurate mass flow meters. The mass flow meter shown in this picture has a flow rate of 12 cubic meters per hour and an accuracy of 0.3 percent. So you can imagine that filling a high capacity silo with water is or can already take several hours. For example, a 50 cubic meter silo will take uh, four hours filling time at least. The accuracy is 0.3 percent, which is already good for a flow meter, but sometimes the accuracy required for uh, of a process vessel scale need to be higher. Calibration by water allows to monitor the linearity, hysteresis and error at full scale, full scale deflection and step by step of a process vessel scale. And by using this flow meter and water you can um, identify mechanical problems in a tank scale uh, because you compare the filling level and the readout of the mass flow meter with the readout of the weight display. So possible mechanical errors can be identified and corrected. However, there's a disadvantage which is um, uh, to be seen in the nature of water. Not all processes allow to be calibrated by water because the material which is handled in the silos primarily should be dry and if water is used then it needs a long time to dry the silo from the inside. Another possibility is the so-called step-by-step calibration. Especially in dry countries the calibration with water is very expensive and time-consuming. Time Step-by-step um, -step calibration uses uh, sand or another bulk material. This can be a suitable method. For example, sand or um, polyethylene granulate will be filled into silos step-by-step -step, based on a truck which is loaded and weighed on a truck scale. <coughs> so large amounts of material can be filled in step-by-step -step and <coughs> The indicator software allows to um, enter the filled in quantities as a, as a calibration weight and the value will be recorded and then the next amount of material will be added so that the weight increases step by step until it reaches the full scale. The cycle will, re will be repeated until the full capacity of the silo is achieved. Also this is quite time consuming. So, as the initial calibration of silos by weight is extremely time consuming, um, there is the need of an alternative method. We assume that the load cells which are installed are very accurate and the 
mechanical in installation of the whole silo has been done quite properly. So assuming this and having this in hand as a condition, we can do a smart calibration um, which is based on the software and the calibration data of the load cells. Smart calibration means to calculate an expected full-scale deflection value um, based on the load cell data which can be found on the certificates. This is a load cell certificate here. It contains all necessary data for the smart calibration, like the number of load cells, the nominal load of each load cell, the gravitational constant at installation site, the output value at the maximum capacity of the load cell, the output impedance and individual correction factors for linearity and hysteresis. In the next step, we will show you a smart calibration procedure based on uh, calibration data, on, on load cell certificates, uh, where we insert the maximum value into the scale and other parameters uh, to finally achieve um, uh, a full-scale uh, span value um, as a calibration data. We are on the display uh, screen of the transmitter. Uh, we will now enter the setup menu to access the calibration menu. And we go to weighing point, enter weighing point. Um, the weighing point is called internal A. Internal means it's an analog weighing point. And we will enter the calibration menu. We have three choices, new calibration, modify an existing one, and change parameters of the weighing point. However, parameters are not related to the calibration directly. We enter new calibration, and we will accept that the span and dead load will be reset of the former calibration. The first step is to enter the new max load. We set it to 4,000 kg and we add um, a digit after the comma. Then here it suggests automatically a division of uh, 0.1 kilogram, but we say we want to have it uh, in 0.5 kilogram steps. Then uh, the dead load will be determined. The dead load is the weight of the empty vessel including all accessories without any load. And we will um, choose the determination of the dead load by load. So it will then measure the incoming signal from the load cells just by weighing the empty vessel. And you see it records the dead load value as 0.066576 millivolt per volt. The next one is <coughs> setting the max value we have the choice to calibrate the scale by load, yeah, using calibration weights. But as with vessels, uh, using calibration weights is quite time consuming and um, also difficult in a mechanical way. Um, we have the po possibility to do a calibration by load cell data. Therefore we click on data and we enter the number of load cells here. So we can enter up to 10 load cells. We choose four. Uh, we have to enter the capacity of each load cell, which in this case is 1,000 kilogram. Uh, <coughs> we can choose an uh, individual gravity weigh value. We can um, enter a specific hysteresis error, which is listed on the load cell certificate and we can enter specific values for each load cell. Uh, we can take them from the calibration certificates. So these could be deviating from one millivolt per volt. They could be 0 0.99976. In the same way the output impedance of that load cell can vary. So we can enter up to four load cell data here. In this case we don't change it. 
course it's just a demonstration and um, yeah then we have all the data for calibration we confirm with enter and then the span value will be calculated so I just go to calculation and now the millivolt per volt value will be calculated this is the result which is shown if we want to leave the menu um, we will be asked whether we want to do a calculation test this is internal check of the recorded value against the memory in the A2D converter we can skip it or we can do it and then we can leave the calibration and we have to change the data, uh, save the data, this is very important uh, otherwise the calibration will be lost so now we have a calibrated scale and we can uh, twist it up we can scale it up to almost 4000 kilo we have seen the um, practical demonstration of um, smart calibration and as a resume a summary um, we can state that this method is very fast and easy um, the accuracy will be very good with accurate load cells and with a good mechanical setup um, the method saves an, a big amount of water compared to the calibration with water um, the, the cons, the only con is that the mechanical problems, if there are any mechanical problems, will not be indicated. That means if uh, constrainers are blocked, if uh, load cells are not um, in aligned properly, and um, if there is any uh, hard connection uh, of pipes to the vessel, which can affect the weighing result, this will not be detected. Finally, I would like to show you an application example of a calibration by weights uh, and to give you an impression about the amount of work and material which is necessary to do a calibration of high capacity silos. Um, the application is on a boat. It's, a, it's actually a vessel for fish fodder which is used uh, in aquacultures in uh, Norway and the, op the optimization, the purpose was the optimization of the logistics to deliver the fish fodder to the fish farms. This ship was equipped with five silos of a nominal capacity of 300 tons each and the whole system of all five silos should get the legal approval to deliver the fish fodder directly from the boat to the uh, fish farm voicing it. So it means there was a requirement for a legal for trade scale um, with uh, class C3 load cells. Um, for this, a calibration with weights was absolutely mandatory. And 200 weights with a capacity of 1.5 tons each were loaded step by step on each silo using a crane and manpower. So, all in all, um, the duration per calibration of a silo was five hours um, a crane was used which cost 550 euro per hour rent and three employees now, finally the accuracy of the system was so good that the weight and measures approval for a class C3 scale was awarded so you show that this accuracy can be achieved but the amount of work and material is quite high Thank you for attending this webinar. We hope you enjoyed the given informations. If you like to pose a question or send any feedback, please address it to matthias.rehren at minibea-intech.com. Goodbye, thank you.